These darn rookie drivers. See this corner here? I've had probably three or four of them now have to readjust and back up to get around me. And it's like, then I saw two or three of them. They were able to just swing through. It's like, then you have UPS. He parked over there in the corner. So I'm going to get out of here and make it a little easier for the next guy. So let's get moving. Let's get this pre-trip started. And we'll go from there. We got this. All right, so even though it is dark right now, I want to show you. Here's my fuel pressure gauge. And the greatest thing about this gauge is that you know exactly when it's trying to change your fuel pre or fuel filters. So this, when I'm cruising around, I was actually able to bury this down at zero, meaning that it is time for a fuel filter change and a cleaning of the lift pump in, you know, the, the screen that's in the lift pump. So it's gonna be time to do that. So I'm gonna do that sometime on this trip. But yes, fuel pressure gauge, You'll wonder why do I have loss of power? Well, a fuel pressure gauge is a great thing to have. So specifically for that. There she is. I know you can't see it that much, but you can see zero PSI on the fuel pressure. I let off, build, build, build. There you go, it goes to that. Then I'll give it throttle again. And we'll drop her back down. So like I said, easy fix. You got it. this is general maintenance. You gotta do it. So get yourself fuel pressure gauge so you don't have to guess. All right, so again, I'm saying this is a maintenance item. So even with, you can see 324 miles, um, and I forgot to reset it at like the 10 mile mark. So even with the low fuel pressure and the exhaust manifold leak, we are getting better fuel economy. And the load only weighs a thousand pounds less than the one that we tested before. So that's awesome. 340 miles to a normal tank. That's pretty good. And exhaust manifold leak, and clogged fuel pump. I think we can definitely do better. All right, like I was saying earlier, this is this loads about a thousand pounds less than the last one, and we're getting better fuel economy too. So, oh, I, I got worried there. I thought my strap was missing. Look at that, it's still down there. Always want to stop and check the straps. And, you know all the miscellaneous BS. So, doing pretty good. None of the cars are touching. Yep, pretty good. Anything on the winch. Perfect. So we're using mud flap for this fill up. Um, discount code is in the description. We'll get $10 off. Uh, if you use it the first time using my code, we'll both get $10 off. So once you've used it for the first time, so free $10. But I got like $33 in credit right now, so kind of nice. But fill up the uh, the small tank and we'll be on our way. So we'll do that fuel filter later. I got to stop at Walmart and grab a can of brake clean. I want to stop at AutoZone and get some gaskets. We'll probably do that stuff maybe later. But we definitely got to do the fuel filter today. All right, made it to the Walmart. Uh, gonna get the things that we need here and then we're gonna shoot to an auto parts, well, bank first, then auto parts store. So hopefully we can get this stuff resolved today. I was told that if I put the 12 valve, 12 valve gaskets on the engine, it should seal the leak. So I'm gonna try that today as well because I am, oh my God, this leak is so loud. So all you hear is the ticking. So I'm gonna, yeah, let's get that taken care of today too. So this is the only reason I'd say to upgrade to a fast or put a filter before this, because this is your lift pump right here for the 12 valve, okay? See, there's this 90 degree elbow, there's a screen in that. There's also a screen at the bottom of the, uh, the lift pump, so I'll show you guys that too. Basically, this square is one inch, which I don't have a one inch wrench, I only have a 24, an inch is, or 25.4, something like that. So, basically just take this guy here, and uh, yeah. Unscrew it. All right, so you guys can see through here. You'll definitely want to clean this out. But if you guys look, you can see exactly why I don't have any fuel pressure. So there's a screen right there. You're going to want to take that big nut off, and they are a pain. 
So let me get that and I'll get right back with you. All right, you guys can see down in there, there is a little screen also in there. We're gonna try to get to, there's a spring. And then there is this guy right here. Here's another lens. You can see all the crap. So look at that. I don't even know what that is. No idea. But you guys can see all that. This is why this is definitely a maintenance item. I recommend trying to clean this. Um, get a fuel pressure gauge, you'll know why. But I'm gonna spray that out with some, uh, some brake clean and some pressurized air. All right, so you may not get it perfect, but you can see just how much cleaner that is. Um, there is some little debris and dots in there that you're not gonna get. Um, what I did was basically took a screwdriver and just like mixed it around in there. There was some dead bugs and other things in there, but um, the main culprit was this guy right here. No idea what that is, but you know, could have fell in the tank at some point. Um, just, yeah, just gotta clean this out every now and again. Now, when you go to put this back on, um, that spring is gonna fight the hell out of you. So unless you have this wheel off, uh, it is very hard to do. So yeah, um, give me about 15 minutes and I'm gonna try to shove that thing back on and we'll go from there. But yeah, like I said, this will make a huge fuel pressure difference. So I remember every time I clean this out, fuel pressure goes up to like 32 to 34 PSI on a D cell. And then over the time, it just starts to, Get dirtier and dirtier but this is something that is normal um, no matter what you do whether you run waste oil or you run regular fuel um, this is something that you're going to have to do maybe not as often as me but you're definitely going to have to do it every now and again if you're having fuel pressure issues i definitely recommend you look into this rather than replacing the whole lift pump this is a cleanable screen so do that save yourself the money because these things uh, get expensive after you have to replace a couple of them so i think they're like 150 bucks a pop from where i was getting them so all right, so just for the record, what I do is I'll put one hand around this side of the shock tower and the other hand, one hand you're gonna wanna push down on it as hard as possible and the other hand you're gonna wanna screw it in. Um, so it's done now, I just gotta tighten it down with a ratchet, throw on, throw some Teflon on this guy here and then we'll be good to go. Sorry if you can't hear me, but we're looking for obvious leaks. I don't see any there. I got it up to like, you guys will see here. Right there, it's at 20 and idle. Had it up to 28 earlier, there it goes 26. We got it at 30, let's shut it down, let's throw some oil in it. Already noticing a huge difference, we're gonna go to the bank and then let's go find an auto parts store because yeah, I just really wanna get these exhaust manifolds fixed. All right, so I decided to wait it out. We did get the exhaust manifold gaskets. I'm not gonna do them right now. I figured let's just run the clock out. I got like three hours left on the clock, so let's just run that out first. Um, then maybe we'll do it later and then I'm gonna take a nap for a little while. And we'll head back out tonight. We'll have all these dropped tomorrow. And we'll go from there. But yeah, I'm tired of the clicking noises of the exhaust manifold. So it's like, I was told that the people that have run the 12 valve, the 12 valve gaskets, they don't have leaks. So I've heard that from actually a couple people now. So let's try it. Last night at the same throttle position, I'd have been at like zero PSI. Look at that, 25, 28. All right, you guys didn't think we were making this trip without Burger King, right? So we got about 30 minutes until we are at a Loves. I'm gonna be able to get a shower. I wanna do this exhaust manifold and fix this door because the lock doesn't work now. I think it fell off on the inside so you can turn the key, but it won't do anything. All right, real quick before I start tearing into the truck and going over the load. So I wanna let you guys know, okay? If you're gonna be a car hauler and you're planning on doing non-CDL specifically, okay? Cars are not like freight, okay? They're heavy and you don't get paid as much, okay? So if you gotta do an SUV, a minivan, if you're not taking specifically three cars, just three cars, you wanna be as light as possible, which one reason, you know, everybody who has a Kaufman, you know, I'll say it, they're doing it right, okay? But if you're a non-CDL guy and you're running a four-wheel drive truck, 
trying to haul three cars. I'm gonna tell you what, that shit is stressful as hell because a four wheel drive truck is so much heavier than a two wheel drive truck. So honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys, if you are getting into non CDL car hauling, like I said, this is car hauling, not freight. I don't care what you guys do with freight. You want your four wheel drive for freight? Go ahead, get it, I don't care. For cars specifically, get a two wheel drive truck. I'm telling you now, save yourself the headache, save yourself the shitload of weight that it's gonna save you. I get, you know, the independent front suspension, you have a lower truck, it doesn't look as cool, you know, whatever. You can't drive in the snow, but I'm telling you now, if, if you're gonna do this and you're gonna run the same trailer as me or you're gonna run a wedge, get a two wheel drive truck. That's all I can tell you. The weight savings, I had this truck up to 9,800 pounds empty with all the stuff that is on this is a four wheel drive truck, okay? Now granted, yes, 700 pounds, that is the fuel tank and there's a 250 pound bumper, but you also gotta remember a two wheel drive truck is gonna be so much lighter because of the independent front suspension. And even though I don't like independent front suspension, it's so much lighter than a solid axle. So there are ways around beefing up your two wheel drive suspension. But like I said, if you're gonna do that, just, I'm telling you now, just do it. Save yourself the headache. Those are the lessons that I've learned over the past couple of weeks, um, playing around with the weight on these tra on these cars. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys it's close. I'm you know, not gonna, um, I don't have the scale tickets in front of me now, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm gonna tell you now it's close. And to be able to use my aux tank, if I had the two wheel drive truck and maybe not the heavy bumper, I would be able to use the aux tank. But with these loads, I haven't been able to. So next run out, 100% I am only doing cars. I will not do an SUV and I will not do trucks. So with that being said, I was talking to a few people and I got on the forums and everything. These are the 12 valve gaskets. I never liked these because of how thin they were. Um, I did like the MLS gaskets a little bit more, but from what people are saying is there's people who have put a common rail manifold on a 12 valve without any issues and there's no leaks and they said specifically to run three four five six to run the 12 valve gaskets so there is an indu there's two ways around this okay my turbo is in the back the only way to get the turbo in the back is to either get an industrial manifold for the 12 valve get a dps two-piece manifold which is also very expensive and the the industrial manifold is very rare and hard to find and a common rail manifold, factory manifold. You can bolt them right up. It sucks, but this is what we're gonna deal with. So I'm gonna swap this out quick and go from there. By the way, truck is running phenomenal ever since we did the, the fuel filter. Um, like I said, that's a maintenance item. Do that or at least get a fuel pressure gauge. Every truck should have a fuel pressure gauge. I, I don't care. It is a very good tell you when to do your maintenance tool. Because a lot of times, most people will say, oh, we'll do our fuel filters every 10, 15K. Sometimes you don't need to. I get it's cheap. The fuel pressure gauge will tell you exactly when you need to change it. You'll notice a little bit of a drop, or it goes down a lot, change your fuel filter. Um, any of these gauges that I have, oil pressure, I see a lot of guys throwing rods. Um, I've done, I, I did a motor on a 6.7 before because of that. Uh, it ran out of oil and nobody knew because, get this, no oil pressure gauge. This oil pressure gauge will tell you if there's a problem. If you're used to seeing 63 PSI and one day it's down to 55 PSI, get out and check your oil. I did that and I had air bubbles on my dipstick from how little the oil was in there. Yes, it'll keep building good pressure, but you're pulling loads and everything, get you an oil pressure gauge. Same with the boost gauge. It is a very good diagnostic tool. You're wondering, why isn't my truck performing well? Well, the first thing you're gonna say is, oh, I need a fuel filter. What happens if you just have a simple boost leak? You're, gonna, you're not gonna notice that your boost is a lot lower than normal, or you're gonna be overspooling your turbo at times if there's a boost leak. So, very good diagnostic tool. Same with EGT gauge. I haven't been running an EGT gauge, but I probably should. My EGTs are probably through the roof. Um, like I said, I will be getting the Banks iDash, and I'm gonna put it in this spot here in the lens. So I'm gonna just black out um, that gauge there 
and someone, a couple people mentioned just put electrical tape over the gauges. So I'll pull that out, maybe put some under that, and then just so those lights don't illuminate, but I don't want to damage the cluster. So the only thing I'm going to do, I'll put a 52 millimeter hole here, and we're going to pop the bank's I dash right here. We'll have boost, fuel pressure, oil pressure, and EGTs. So that's all that matters. So let's uh, let's get to tearing this thing apart. Okay, so for those of you wondering, here's the difference between a common rail circle and a 12 valve square okay when you line these up you can see that it will still somewhat get in that area and uh hopefully seal correctly but everybody's saying that it will so you can see like there is a little bit of overlap so we're gonna try it and uh we'll go from there hopefully it works out all right so they're all on Here's the old ones, you guys can see, they leak out of each side, so if you're gonna do a common rail manifold on a 12 valve, don't use the common rail gaskets. So I torqued everything down to 37 foot-pounds like it's supposed to be. Um, I'm gonna, damn alternator wire. Damn, son. You gotta love them spread axles. So let's get this thing started and see if she leaks. Probably not going to know right away if she leaks, but I want to get it hot and then retorque it. I just love spread axles. Oh man, almost as bad as a triaxle. So I don't know if I feel like messing with the door today. Um, guys, I understand. Um, I could have put this one in the middle here and then had this one over the winch and it would have actually worked, but I wanted the lightest car up front. Also, this is um, a very expensive one, so I wanted this one in the front. And yes, this one should have been in the middle because it's also expensive but the problem is it's really heavy so tongue weight wise i was able to get the trucks um axle ratings like in check pretty decent so i want to try to keep them there i'm trying to keep the axle rating under like seven i think i have them at like 6300 right now which is awesome so i'm gonna go edit this video take a nap and that's pretty much gonna do it but dude look at this overhang past the rear axle you guys see that shit that's a lot i'm glad we get to start driving tonight so i don't got to worry about any florida scales because you know how florida is with their overlanks i think their legal limit is 68 feet and uh i'm 67 and a half without the flip outs so let's go get this thing dropped off in the morning one of them's going i don't know which one but yeah so by the way i was reading the comments i haven't responded to any yet but i said about drilling uh two of those holes out somebody had mentioned it and you guys got to remember that this is literally just a spare this is not a throw it on and drive on the highway for thousands of miles this is a spare only so i would consider drilling out two of the holes just to be able to fit on that bracket not to mention i paid eleven hundred dollars to have all this stuff done and it was a ripoff, so I'm not modifying anything. Like, other than, I'm completely okay with drilling two of them holes out to make them bigger. But again, it's not, it's really not gonna hurt anything. These are thick steel, and it's literally just a spare tire, not a throw it on and run it forever type deal. So, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one. Have a good one.